Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the US public meeting. My name is Jude Jean Francois, and I'm the project manager with the Florida Department of Transportation. During the meeting, we will explain plans to improve safety and operations along this segment of US 1. We encourage your participation, and our, there are many ways you can provide input about the project. All comments and questions will be responded to in writing and will become part of the public meeting records. I will now turn it over to our project team to begin the presentation. This meeting is being conducted in a hybrid format to provide multiple ways for the public to receive information about the project and to provide input. This meeting is being conducted in person, virtually through GoToWebinar, and over the phone. If you dialed in today on a telephone line, the PowerPoint presentation is available on the project webpage at www dot cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 448794-1. The purpose of tonight's meeting is to explain the project goals, present the department's recommended improvements to help achieve those goals, and to hear from the community about the proposed changes. This public meeting was advertised and is being conducted in accordance with state and federal requirements, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting Melissa McKinney, District 5 Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Mail Station 501, Deland, Florida 32720, by phone at 386-943-5077, or by email at melissa.mckinney at dot state. Dot fl dot us. You may also contact Stefan Kulikowski, State Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 605 Suwannee Street, Mail Station 65, Tallahassee, Florida 32399-0450, by phone at 850-414-4742, or email at stefan.kula. K O W S K I at D O T dot S T A T E dot F L dot U S. This information is shown on a sign at the in person location, on the project website, and in the meeting notifications. The project limits are on US 1 in northern Brevard County from Minnie Lane to the Volusia County line. The project begins north of Mims and passes through the unincorporated community of Scottsmore for a distance of approximately 8.7 miles. The project began in fall 2022. A stakeholder meeting was held with local officials and agencies in February 2023, and this is the project's public meeting. The 60% plans will be completed in summer 2023. Design is ongoing and expected to finish in late spring 2024. Construction is anticipated to start in early 2025. The estimated construction cost is $23 million. The project team has been evaluating various strategies to help make this a much safer corridor as part of the Florida Department of Transportation's Target Zero, which is a statewide initiative to reduce the number of transportation-related serious injuries and deaths across the state. The safety strategies include, but are not limited to, encouraging safer driving speeds, upgrading lighting at two intersections, adding speed feedback signs, replacing the digital message signs at Deering Parkway, and improving pedestrian and bicycle accommodations. Proposed improvements include resurfacing the existing roadway, upgrading the existing traffic signals, and enhancing pedestrian features at the Anglers Lane Brockett Road intersection, creating bicycle through lanes or keyholes next to right turn lanes, upgrading bus stops, and providing sidewalk connections. A safety review performed during design showed a high number of crashes at Markwood Street. To help enhance safety at the intersection, this project proposes to close the existing median opening. Drivers traveling south on US-1 wishing to access Markwood Street 
would travel south to Golden Shores Boulevard and then make a U-turn. Motorists traveling west on Markwood Street who wished to go south would turn right or north onto US-1, then make a U-turn at the next median opening. The second median change is proposed at Latimer Street. The full median opening would be converted to a directional median opening. Motorists going south on US-1 will be able to make a left turn to go into the parking lot across from Latimer Street, make a U-turn to go north on US-1, or continue south. Drivers going north on US-1 would be able to make a left turn onto Latimer Street, make a U-turn to go south on US-1, or continue north. Motorists coming out of the parking lot on the east side of US-1 would only be able to turn right. To go south on US-1, they would then make a U-turn at the next median opening at the Moose Lodge. Drivers turning onto US-1 from Latimer Street would have to also turn right. To go north on US-1, they would make a U-turn at the Anglers Lane Brockett Road signalized intersection. Pedestrian improvements at the Anglers Lane Brockett Road signalized intersection include new and upgraded crosswalks, sidewalk curb ramps, and pedestrian signals. The pedestrian crossing distances will also be reduced and lighting will be upgraded. Additionally, improved connections to the Space Coast area transit stops are planned. Lighting will also be installed at the Kelly Road Wiley Avenue intersection. Currently, US-1 in this area has two 12-foot wide travel lanes in each direction with 8-foot wide outside shoulders, 5 feet of which are paved, and a 40-foot wide vegetated median. The inside shoulders range from 0 to 2 feet wide. The posted speed limit is from 45 to 65 miles per hour. The proposed typical section will modify the roadway and create 4-foot wide paved inside shoulders throughout the project limits. A temporary traffic control plan is being developed to move all modes of transportation during construction. Single lane closures can be expected. Lane closures will be coordinated with first responders and Space Coast Area Transit. Access to businesses and private properties will be maintained and all lanes would remain open in the event of an emergency. Necessary drainage repairs and improvements will be made to help prevent water from ponding on the road. Improvements include replacing or repairing eroded inlets, replacing cracked and leaking pipes, replacing or upgrading inlets, grates, and cross drains, and regrading and enclosing the roadside swale to accommodate turn lane widening, bus stop pads, and new sidewalk. We encourage your input and feedback about this project, and there are multiple ways for you to participate. All public comments and questions are part of the public meeting record, and every method for providing public comments and questions carries equal weight. While comments and questions will be accepted at any time, those submitted by July 6, 2023, 14 days after the public meeting, will become part of the project's public meeting record. All comments and questions will be responded to in writing. In-person attendees are encouraged to speak with project team members to ask questions and provide input. To submit a comment for the public meeting record, please complete a printed comment form and return it to project staff. Written comments may also be submitted on the project website at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 448-794-1. You may also contact project manager Jude Jean-Francois directly by email at jude dot j e a n hyphen f r a n c o i s at d o t dot s t a t e dot f l dot u s or by u s mail at the Florida Department of Transportation seven one nine South Woodland Boulevard mail station five four two Deland Florida three two seven two zero you may also call the project manager at 386-943-5487 to provide verbal comments during normal business hours. The contact information is also available on the public meeting notifications that you may have received by mail. To learn more about this project, go to www.cflroads.com. Type the project number 448 
794-1 in the search box at the top right and click Go. Then click on the project name. Public meeting materials are posted on the website now. On behalf of the Florida Department of Transportation, thank you for attending this public meeting and providing your input on the project. If you have comments or questions after the meeting, please submit them by July 6, 2023. Safety is everyone's responsibility, so please stay safe and have a great evening.